So good day again and welcome now to the lesson 2, 3, 4, and 5 of your third quarter in arts. So just a quick recap. On the lesson 1, we discussed the media-based arts and its design, in which we focuses on the photography. And we discussed that photography is being described, or the photographer is being described as a photog uh, is an artist. At the same time, photography is a form of communications. And we identified the noteworthy photographers of the Philippines who won different sets of awards in which their pictures are being published on the books, articles, and different sets of magazines. We have here George Tapan and Chua. So let's move on now on the lesson two. For the lesson two, we have here discussed the film as a technology-driven art. So it's being said, it's a technology which derives as a form of art. Just like on the lesson one, here are the target objectives that we need to target. We have here described the characteristics of media-based arts and design in the Philippines. Use artworks to derive the tradition and history of a community. Identify representative artists as well as the distinct characteristics of media-based arts and design in the Philippines. And realize that Filipino ingenuity is this thing exceptional and on par with the global standards. So let's start. It's being stated that in a film, it is a motion or a moving picture that it has been recorded that so that it can be shown at the cinema or the television. This film tells a story in a real life situation. You can use the camera to take the moving pictures, which can be viewed in screen, cinema, or either on your own television. In the form of film, another form which has risen on the tremendous heights with the last century is film or cinema. It is an early name motion pictures declared in which the film brought yet another dimension into play that of the moving images. So that is the product of the film. The possibilities of this medium created a new art form that was to become a powerful social and economic force and a legacy of the 20th century to the world. Because of creating a film, we now can present sets of different scenarios and images and life scenarios that can tell us a story, whether it's good or not. Cinema, just all the modern art, has been greatly influenced by technology. In the case of cinema, it is an art form that came into being because of technological advances. For the evolvement of this cinema, and we experience it now the, the value of it. The transition from, from its photography came into the late 1800s with the serious photography and the invention of celluloid strip film. So in the year 1800s, in terms of cinema, we use celluloid strip film. The allowed successive still photos of a moving subject to be captured in strip film advancing through a single camera. This was the seed of the highly advanced film medium and which we enjoy today. By looking, um, looking at the history, by looking at the picture, we can say that for you to view a certain image, you need to use a kinetoscope in which it is a pip show cabinet with an eye hole through which this earliest movie can be viewed each one person at a time. So it's a pip show cabinet in which a person can only see on the eye hole for looking on the moving images inside of it. A motor inside the cabinet was moved to the film strip along in a loop with an electric bulb providing illumination from beneath. So that is the original uh, image of kinetoscope and how people view a certain moving image. Moving on, in the meantime, European and American investors were providing one technological advancement after another. The French developed the cinematograph, in which a hand-cracked camera printer and projector all-in-one that was light enough to bring outside the studio. So from kinetoscope 
it transferred now to cinem cinematography. By the year 1901, the earliest motion pictures were rapidly progressing from one scene, from studio films to multiple scenes to narrative films, outdoors. Driven by these and many more advances, the art aspects of filmmaking was born. So, of course, the history of the modern motion picture was with the help of the scientist Thomas Edison is because of the creating of the light bulb. For the lesson three, we're going to discuss now the film as the collaborative art of filmmaking. Collaborative, it is the helping and hand-to-hand -hand help of different persons to do the filmmaking. So the filmmaking includes, of course, we have here the artists, the actors and the actresses, the writers who writes and narrates the story, the production experts in terms of productions, the costumes, the setups, the editings. Of course, the person behind the technicians by getting the camera, by capturing the best uh, angle, the lightning equipment for the lightning and the darkness of the areas, sets, well, what is the theme or the genre, of the film, the props and the costumes that we in use. So let's start with the film director. So film director, it is the director, like the painter and the sculptor in traditional art, who envisions the final effect of the film on its viewer, visually, mentally, and emotionally. The film director, while the painter and the sculptor work with the physical materials, the film director works with ideas, images, sounds, and other effects to create his unique piece of art. So unlike with the painter and sculpture, which focuses on making or crafting a works from the physical materials, as a film director, you need to understand what are the different effects, the sounds that being added, and the images and ideas for you to create a certain film. In addition, he or she conceptualizes the scenes, directs the acting, supervises the cinematography, and finally editing and sound dubbing in much of the same way as a visual artist composer from an artwork. However, the director does not do all this alone. That's the reason why there should be a person on the production expert in which can help on preparing the different materials needed. In terms of acting, first and foremost, there was the art of acting for the film with the live theater as the only form of acting at the time. Film actors had to learn to express themselves without the exaggerated facial expressions and gestures used on stage. With the addition of sound in the 1930s, they then had to learn to deliver their lines naturally and believably. That is one of the best thing you need to know if you going to enroll yourself in an acting workshop. You need to memorize sets of different lines. You need to portray a certain um, image and emotional um, portray in connecting with the audience. Next up, we have your cinematography. It is the behind the scenes. There was the cinematography or the art of film camera work. This captured the director's vision of its scenes through the camera placement and movement, the lightning, and other special techniques. They are the workforce behind the scenes. Next is we have your editing. This was joined by the film editing in which the art of selecting the precise sections of film, then sequencing and joining them to achieve the director's desired visual and emotional effect. Sound editing was also developed as films began to include more ambitious effects beyond the dialogue and the background music. For the editing part, you need to add more sound effects in order for you to get the emotions of the audience and can join on what is happening on the actors and actresses on the film. Next is we'll view the productions or what we call the set design. Underlying all this was the art production and the set design in which it's created in physical terms through locations, scenery, sets, lightning, 
costumes and props in which the mental image that the director had how its scene should work, what period it should depict, and what atmosphere it should convey. This includes creating the words that did not exist as well as the words that were long gone, and designing its production component down to the very last detail. So those are the different persons and workforces which helps you in crafting and creating a certain film. Of course, again, we have the film directors, the acting of the actors and actresses, the production sets, and so on. For the lesson four, we're going to discuss now the different filmmakers who crafted and create sets of different films in the film industry. The first one is we have your Mario J. De Los Reyes and known as Composition is we have your Magnifico and Baguettes, the Viva Films Baguettes. Another, we have your A Love Story, The Unmarried Wife, and Mang Angel na walang langit. Next, another film director is Brillante Mendoza, for in which he was notable for his different uh, works of art in which reflects on the different um, social issues that we are now facing. The examples of his compositions are Taiwan, Alpa, Taklub, Lola, Inatay. Another, we have the film director, Loris Gillian. We have very Tanging Yaman, Ikalimang Utos, Salome, in which malas na biktima na masamang kapalaran, marikadong babae, ang tatak at salot. We have very Santa Santita and Sayo Lamang. Another film director is we have very Marilu Di Sabaya, in which Local international award given from his work, uh, from her works, Jose Rizal and Muro Ami, or what he called the Reef Hunters. And not but not the least, of course, the lesson five for the third quarter in arts is we have the animation. Filipino animators have been involved in the creation of some of the best love and technically challenging animated feature film produced in the last few years. Among this is Toy Story. Up, The Incredibles, Monster University, Cars, Finding Nemo, Planes, Brave, Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, and more. Such recognition of the Philippine talent abroad has spurred the development of the local animation industry as well. So let's check the different animations or animators that um, give opportunities for the Filipinos to be part of it. We have the Toy Story, Up. The Incredibles, The Manster University, Cars, Finding Nemo, Planes, Brave, Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, and so forth. So the Animation Council of the Philippines or Corporation it is a non stock non-profit organization that aims to create and identify identity for the Philippines within the animation industry, make it one of the preferred sources for animation services worldwide. In addition, the Anime Council of the Philippines Corporation is an organization which works hand-in-hand -hand with the participation college and universities, same with the TESDA and other government agencies and local government units to develop animations as a promising career option for Filipinos in the year 2013. TESDA and the ACPI in the 2013 began offering 2D and 3D animation scholarships to interested high school graduates between the ages 18 to and 45. Another is whether the PASI or the Philippine Animation Studio Incorporation, in which established in the year 1991 and has since collaborated in the numerous animation projects and series with the foreign partners, and among these have been the Captain Flamingo, the producing Parker, the Groove High, and the Space Heroes Universe. For this last cartoon, Pasi was tapped by the children's entertainment company based in the Sydney, Australia, and went on to win the best animation category in the 2012-12 Pixel Awards. And here are the works of the Pasi. We have the Captain Flamingo, the producing Parker, the Groove High, and the Space Heroes Universities. 
Among the other exciting milestones in the fast emerging Philippines animation industry was the creation in the 20, 2008 of Ordua, an animated film adaptation of The Legend of the Warrior Princess Pangasinan, in which it was produced by the APT Entertainment, The Seven Tune, and The Imaginary Friends. So what this is Ordua animation? It's recognized as the fully, uh, first fully animated Filipino film created by an all-Filipino group of animators using the traditional hand-drawn animation process with some 3D effects. The characters were, were voiced by an all-star cast of actors from Philippine cinema and television with the scene simply written in Filipino. Also released in 2008 was Dadayo sa Mundo ng Elementalia, said to be the country's first all-digital full-length animated feature film. Produced by the Cutting Edge Productions, the film presents Philippines' medical creatures as a heartwarming characters in a young boy's adventure. The production involved over 500 local animators and featured a traditional digital animation technique. In addition, its characters were rendered in 2D animation while the backdrops were created using 3D animation. Dayo was also the first ever animated movie to be screened during the MMFF or the Metro Manila Film Festival in the 30, 34th in the year 2008 of December. And another breakthrough was the first Filipino full 3D animated film, the RPG Metanoia, in which co-produced by the ambient media, Taumotrop Animation, and the Star Cinema in the year 2010. So it seems like you already know the different films, the technology, the base arts, and the filmmakers, and the animation. So with the use of your art materials, draw your favorite cartoon character that has best described your personality and explain why you choose that character. Thank you very much. I hope that you learned something for our discussion. If you have any queries and comments, feel free to ask to your teacher. And in your comment section, kindly write or jot down your reflection towards what you have learned for today's lesson. Thank you very much and God bless.